welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make your shotgun look like this. A huge problem in games is stuff not being satisfying enough, and today I'm going to fix that by teaching you how to make your shotgun feel more satisfying than how it previously was. It'll really add to the satisfaction of playing your game. It'll add to the enjoyment and the immersion. So make sure to watch to the end because, uh, I don't know. Otherwise, what's the point of starting the video in the first place? Anyway, let's get into it. Hello everybody, today we're going to be talking about how to make a better shotgun in the Godot game engine. And I'm going to start out by saying, I expect that many of you watching already know how to make a basic shotgun and they want to improve it. But because there might be some people who are wondering how to actually make it in the first place, I'm going to really quickly go over the sort of things that you want. This is the code that I'm using for mine. If you want to just copy it, that's fine. But basically, we just have a whole bunch of ray costs, and they act as the individual pellets of the shotgun, and they are fired in random directions, as you can see with the rand range function, in a certain spread here, which is like obviously how much the shotgun spreads, how accurate it is, uh, how in inaccurate it is. We have some particles for when it fires. We have. Yes, we have a smoke effect, we have a muzzle flash effect as well, um, a mesh, which has hands. Hands are optional, you don't necessarily need your character model to have hands, because it's kind of just another layer of complexity, but it does make it look far better, I, in my opinion. If you have the time to put hands in, I would recommend it. We have a simple animation for um, shooting and also the hand moves to pump and load another shell into the shotgun. It looks kind of janky right now. It looks far better in the actual game. I will show you that right now. Okay, so in the game we can see that the... oh, I've fallen. We can see that the shotgun animation looks pretty good in my opinion. Uh, you can see the hand movement and the barrel movement and everything looks in order. Bang, bang. Right, uh, anyway, what you really want is to make your shotgun feel satisfying to shoot. And I've achieved this with the two biggest things that contribute and it's animations and it's particles. And for particles, there's a variety of ways to do this. You definitely want to have some kind of uh, effect like this that I have here. For the effect when the shotgun fires, you actually don't need to have any representation of the bullets. Some games like to have lines coming out so that you can sort of visualize where each of your pellets have fired. But I don't think this is 100% necessary, and a lot of games actually don't do this. Instead, they'll use effects like I have, which is like a smoke or a flash to represent that the gun has fired. But it's not 100% necessary to show what is actually happening with the bullets. With the animations, I have animated this and modeled it in Blender. So here we have the model with colors, of course, and the animation is this simple action here and combine that with another animation which is in the engine itself which simply uses a keyframe on the translation rotation and scale how do you do that you simply select the thing you want to animate here i have a mesh you select the property you want to animate, and you so click the little key button here. And that will create one of these diamonds, which is a key frame. An important frame in the animation that it automatically moves the model into the place that that key frame is in. So if it's rotation, it'll rotate the model to the key frame. If it's scale, it'll scale the model dynamically until it reaches the value you've inputted in the keyframe. That's how you move the model around like that. But the problem with animating in the engine is that you can't do the more complicated things, which is why I have an animation in Blender, which is why I've done this in Blender, because Blender is far more capable 
of producing more complex animations than Godot is. So you want to have your model, you want to animate it, the detailed parts in Blender, and export it over to Godot. Now, when you're exporting, make sure you go from File, Export, and choose GLTF 2.0. I'm not 100% why you do this, but it's the best way to do it, so you should just do it if you're trying to create something like this. We'll have a little look at the script. The firing system is based on the animation system. Once the animation finishes playing, it emits both sets of particles, and for all of the raycasts in the raycasts node here, as you can see, they're all children. It casts to a random x direction in the range spread and a random y direction in the range spread as well if it collides with something and if the collider is an enemy it deals damage when it does this it plays both of the animations that we want one of them is from blender which is this one and one of them is the one that rotates it and scales it in godot that's all it is it's really quite simple now there are some other things that you can do if you want to improve your shotgun even more. One of these things I actually haven't done currently, but I will do in the future. An audio stream player. Now, we just need the basic node, because how do audio stream players work? There's three types. 2D, 3D, and the basic node. The 3D audio stream player plays sound but the closer you get to the source of the sound in the 3D space, the louder the sound will be. This isn't really useful because we're always going to be the same distance away from the shotgun. We're not going to throw the shotgun at the enemies, of course. Actually, that would be kind of cool, but we're not going to do it. What we want is the audio stream player, which doesn't change the volume based on distance. As you can see, it says plays back audio non-positionally. Um, I had two of those. We don't need two. Actually depends but um, once you've got the audio stream player coming down to the audio tab you want to record externally an audio file you can do this pretty simply by just like using any recording software and using your mouth even you can just go like and that's your that's your shotgun sound and then put it into the stream section here and in your script have it play whenever the animation plays, or whenever you fire your shotgun, or something like that. That will really increase the juice at which you shoot your shotgun at. Those things, I mean, there are some aspects you can add to make it slightly better, but I really just wanted to give a basic overview of how to make your shotguns a little bit nicer to work, to play with, and those th three things that I've mentioned particles, animations, and sound do a fantastic job of achieving this. Uh, as you can see, some play testing. It's quite satisfying. It really is quite satisfying. If there were some sounds here, it would be a fantastic experience. And that's, of course, what we want when playing games. Now, if you want more tutorials, if you want to see more things like this, I would highly recommend that you subscribe to the channel. I don't upload very consistently, but I do have some other videos on my channel that you might find interesting, like, for example, the grappler that you've seen me use throughout this video, and I have made a video on that which has done exceptionally well, for some reason. People really would like to see grapplers, apparently, so what I'm going to do in the future is I'm going to make a part two of this video where, as you can see, the grappler only shoots out a straight line, which doesn't it looks okay, but it doesn't look fantastic. I wanted to introduce a little bit of wiggle to the rope before it latches, which will just make things look a little bit more realistic. This was actually suggested by a viewer, and I've put the name of that viewer on the screen right now. If you have any other suggestions, please leave them down in the comments, because I might just make a video about your suggestions. So, that's all for me. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.